Today, I um, wanted to talk a little bit uh, about Angular JS. Um, it's um, JavaScript framework, and can I get my slides? Yeah, perfect. Um, um, I will uh, talk a little bit uh, about me, what I'm doing, giving a quick start. Um, talk a little bit about Angular history, um, show some stuff, and at the end, I'm doing a little overview about some uh, some Angular features. So. Um, I am a software engineer, um, coach and consulting, uh, and also um, at the moment I'm writing um, a book about Angular Jazz at the German publisher called D. Verlag. Um, and um, I work together with two other guys, so Sascha and Philip. We are um, doing the, we are um, on the publishing house on the domain Angular JSDA. We are doing workshops, articles in-house consulting and we, we, we're a team and um, we are um, on some project in, in Germany and uh, get with some enterprise um, customers and uh, AngularJS in touch. So, um, AngularJS, what's about this AngularJS? If you um, look at Google Trends, you can see um, a few JavaScript frameworks and um, there are many people are interested in AngularJS. So, um, what, what is it? If you go on a, um, on a website, on the official website, there are some, some codes like fully extensible, extraordinary, expressive readable, quick to develop, reusable, embeddable, injectable, testable. So, what? <laughs> what does it do? So, um, this is a hype and uh, so many people talking about, and I want to show you a little bit why so many people um, so um, so um, amazed to the, the framework. So, um, if you see this this little quick voting, um, maybe um, we can do a little voting here. It's just not not so precise. So, how many of you people already used AngularJS in this room? Count maybe five to six. Okay. Um, how many know AngularJS? Oh, okay. So it's 40, 50, I don't know. I'll just go around here, something like this, okay. And how many of you never heard something about AngularJS? Two, three, four, okay. <laughs> Bad for you. <laughs> okay, so um, if you see, while I was uh, updating these uh, two boxes, there was a chart on the left, that, uh, on, the, uh, on the right, sorry. <laughs> that um, updates automatically and uh, the, the, the sum and the button also changed immediately, immediately when I'm changing the values. So um, if some of you already had some projects with jQuery or something, you may know how many, um, how many code there's needed to um, synchronize all these, these three views. With Angular, it's quite easy. You just have to do something like this. So, um, I will explain a little bit what's happening here. You have um, three variables, like used, no, and never heard, that's just bound to the, to the input. And um, it's uh, marked as model, so you can modify it, and it's, uh, it's known in the Angular world. So, with these models, I can, uh, in a um, template basis, I can really, really simple sum up them, for example. So, this is how that thing here appears. And so if I change the values, Angular automatically de um, detects the change and updates the value behind the sum. Also, I can, I can um, uh, bind it to other, like maybe uh, style attribute and the, um, the high of the, of the div class. I have some other classes here. They're just for color and adjusting the, the right position. So 
That's all, nearly. I have this binding to this, to this model, and it's, I have automatically updates. That's a two-directional uh, data binding used in Angular. There are um, other frameworks, they're also using it, but um, in Angular, you're using it with plain JavaScript objects and not uh, any web or so kind. That's a bit special about Angular. So, um, about Angular in, in, in general, it's a JavaScript framework built for single page applications. It's um, from Google. Um, it's an open source framework, and its uh, main part is designed for testing. So, it's really easy to test uh, um, those things. And um, the pattern, for those who are interested in more detail, it's a model view, view model pattern, or <laughs> there's a little thing, model view whatever, because there are so many um, different um, uh, patterns that are uh, nearly the model view controller, and um, so it's model view whatever. If you uh, want to get deeper in touch, you can, you can talk with me. So, um, the story about Angular. Um, story? What, what kind of story? Okay, the story is um, every big thing, um, I think, has to be, um, um, has uh, his own story. And the story about Angular starts in the year 2009 uh, with Mishko Havery, that uh, can call the father of Angular. He um, built the Angular framework um, for web developers in a Google 20% project. And he developing uh, it for, for a while, he's getting uh, better and better with it. And uh, once, once a day, he um, comes in touch with the Google Feedback project and talks to the project lead of, the, of this project. And um, this project has a problem. Um, they are developing in a JavaScript front end with um, some developers um, six months. And the project is growing and growing, and it's really slow and ha hard to maintain, and uh, it's not really it's not really nice to develop. So um, they're talking to each other, and uh, Mishko said to him, "Okay, I'm doing here my new little framework called Angular, and um, maybe you let me try to re-implement your, your code with my framework." And they were talking a little bit more, and then there was a deal. Mishko said, "Okay." I took your Google feedback code and re-implemented in Angular in two weeks. Oh, okay, six months with many developers against one developer, two weeks. <laughs> product lead says, okay, if you, if you do this, we will use Angular for, for our product. All right, okay. So um, he failed. It took three weeks to implement the whole code new. But um, interesting thing is, um, the code before um, was produced by, um, by, by the team was um, 17,000 lines of code uh, with many JavaScript, jQuery, all in two. And he reduced the code to 1,500 lines in three weeks, what the other have done in six months. So that's really impressive. And um, that's, the, that's the beginning story of Angular, how it all started. And uh, Google adopted from a 20% project to the main project <laughs> of a Google company. So um, how does it work? Um, it's uh, like in other talks we heard before, um, it's about boilerplate. So don't repeat yourself. So everything you write more um, um, every time and um, again and, and again is, um, abs is abstract and given by the framework so you can really easily use it. Like um, the data binding I showed before, you just can bind with some attributes like ng model or something. You can bind data structures to input elements or such things. There are many, many, many more such constructs, but um, that's don't repeat yourself um, style. All, um, also, the structure, um, there's a really good, good structure with the model view view model pattern. You um, always know how to split your different parts of the application and uh, don't really need to, to invent something new. You, you just can use the, um, the structure there. And it's designed for testability, so um, you, can, you can test everything you produce in Angular uh, quite easy. There are um, so many code for unit testing and also end-to-end -end testing, and um, it's quite easy, it's quite fun. You just have to use it. It's really cool. So it's so much into it that um, reduce your, your uh, reinventing, uh, reinventing some, some stuff that's already there. Um, uh, for example, it's directives. Directives, um, we can explain like it's you extend the HTML like you want. Uh, that could be, uh, for example, text or attributes. Just a moment. 
Mm. That means you can you can um, take some code and um, you need over and over again and can um, put it in a directive that's maybe an HTML tag and um, can can make it two components so you can reuse it every time. I will show you um, an example. Um, this is a not so impressive example. It's just I have a simple diff with a zero in it. Okay, now I have um, the, um, the task. I want to um, combine this with a range, with a range input field, so I can update it against, like in the first example, with this input uh, field of the three bars. So I could just do the same as, as before, bind the model to some variable, and print this, uh, the variable into the DOM. So the binding is complete, nothing to do more. I can uh, update it all the time, and it works fine. So mm, new task, mm, maybe I want to reset something. OK, so there's another directive called ng-click that uh, reacts on click handles. And in this um, expression, I only have to write maybe some work like 0. And I could use it to adjust it with a range and we set it on a, on, a, on a click quite easy. So um, this game can be done a little bit more. For example, a color picker. Um, if I have um, the um, RGBR values of a um, typical um, color setting, I can use them to update a diff container with a background color bound to it. So really easy, uh, I'm able to uh, change this value and see the direct Im impact, and the code is not even harder to write. It's just some range, it's more, it's only the R here, uh, and I can bind it to a, to a style in the HTML when um, AGBR attribute is set. So quite easy as well. Um, I extended the example a little bit. So this is another color picker um, that uh, I've built with, with AngularJS. And um, as you mentioned, um, I don't use any JavaScript. So um, it's just all into the core. You can use via directives. And even this color picker is also without any own written line of JavaScript. It's just these, uh, these basic directives with a little bit um, complex directives, but all there. You can build a complex component like these, where you can choose some colors. They are directly um, accepted. And also, you can use the old range picker. Um, I have Jess, Jess Fiddle, who, uh, for those of you who are interest, uh, and interested in this, can just go and uh, look at it. I will publish the slides after my talk. So um, there are more directives you could create. For example, um, you can create a component um, that's called rating. And you just can uh, bind a model to it and set a max value, and maybe you can have stars or something. It's up to you. You can define your own directives. and It's like you can use tabs, you can have tooltip directive, and so you can, for your, for your own uh, everyday problems, you can build a reuse reusable component that you can use just in HTML. You have just to write it down, and the predefined code is, is executed, and it works fine. You don't have to copy-paste JavaScript code or something, and it's on the HTML is readable, so you, you, you really know what's happening. When you see a waiting, uh, wa waiting directive in your, in your HTML code, you know, ah, OK, it's my waiting class, I know what's happening. And no um, invisible binding over classes or something. So um, there are many frameworks, um, or big, um, big companies like Twitter Bootstrap, that are um, also uh, providing um, um, components for the, for the Angular. So you can use many of these. I just want to try. Uh, if it's, yeah, for, for example, you have accordions, you have all the buttons, all, all the stuff, even a carousel, all the stuff you, you need to use. And it's quite simple, even HTML, with a little bit of JavaScript each time, but it's just just uh, pushing the pushing the images from the uh, from the server. So um, another framework is can do. Uh, I don't um, if you if you don't know it, it's a really really big um, jQuery based framework, 
and there's um, um, a pretty nice, um, a pretty nice wrapper around it. It's called Angular Kendo, so you can really easily use all the Kendo directives in your Angular world. So um, there are many companies that are producing already components and reusable and share them, and um, but we also um, could use our own directives. So um, I want to do some cool stuff. And um, when I was um, thinking about what I'm going to talk about, um, there was a um, package in my, <laughs> in my room with uh, Leap Motion. I don't know if uh, any of you know the Leap. Um, the Leap Motion is a little input device. Um, with this device, you could, um, you could track your hands. You could, um, it's, um, infrared light and um, two cameras that track your hand and you can do some crazy stuff with it. So um, I had um, maybe games or something, so um, I was thinking about what, what can I do and maybe I just control my slides with it. So um, I've run with me, here's the leap motion, and I just connect it to the computer, put it here, and um, so um, there's a JavaScript API for, for the Leap Motion. It's really quite easy. Um, that allows me, um, if I move my hand like this, whoa! Oh, this goes back, sorry. <laughs> so I can control my slides with just uh, gestures. And it's really, really, really nice. So um, the next step. I was, from, I was really impressed about this for the, for the first time. You can really crazy stuff, like you can define own gestures, for example, menu. Oh, it doesn't work at this revolution? Oh, okay, it works. And can go back. And you can also scroll it all the time. Go up, go down. It's a little bit laggy at this. It doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work here it's for now. But it doesn't matter. Um, we can use now the Angular and Leap, because um, I, I was thinking about, okay, um, Angular is all about reusability, and maybe uh, there are more people that want to control their, um, their um, Revel.js slides with maybe Leap or something. So um, I started to think about directives. Directives should be easy to use, re reusable, um, and I wanted to connect with a an, with an, with an leap. So the thing I want uh, to use would be nice to leap swipe left as attribute on any, uh, on any element, like in my, in my slides, and uh, just call it a function, like slide left. It's quite possible in Angular. So I made it, and now I'm able to slide this, um, this um, slides with a, with a leap. Um, but there was another thing. I, I was thinking about, hmm, maybe I should do some more stuff. <laughs> so I was, ah, come here. I was, I think it's a light, sorry. Just put it here, it's here maybe better in the shadow. Yeah, here, here it's better. It's just new technology. Come on here. So um, at first I showed you the, um, this little um, first voting, where I used the, um, the, um, the voting about the how many used Angular, ever seen about Angular, and um, yeah, so I, I thought about, okay, um, there's a tab gesture in the sleep, and maybe I, I can just, um, just use this tab to increment some <coughs> values in it. So I wrote um, a directive, leap screen tab, where just the same expression language as before was in, so I could um, just increment the used with a tab. That was the idea. So let's, let's try this. If I tab, oh, cool. <laughs> so that's a possibility with the leap and the Ang AngularJS. Come on here. So that's a possibility with the leap and the AngularJS. I'm uh, able to use um, so many components just in my HTML while creating attributes, it's um, about um, maybe attribute, maybe it's a, it's a whole tag, or maybe it's just a class, I can, I can bound functionality at any kind I want. So um, if some of you want um, 
to implement with me. I've created a little GitHub project, <laughs> Angular Leap. Um, and there I want to create an Angular module so you can join me and um, go on to the, um, create some crazy directives, maybe today, because it's quite easy. I'm here, and if you're interested, just, just join me. Um, but that's one, just one point about Angular. Um, Angular provides much more features like um, um, own e HTTP service that allows you easy, easy to communicate. Even with a CRUD service, there's a complete feature that you just can, um, can, can use. Um, and it's so many things that are interesting with AngularJS. So um, I think I was a little bit quick, <laughs> but um, that's all my slides. Okay, and if you're interested in Angular, just come, come to me. It's quite nice, also the leap, there are many games. And um, yeah, I, I thank you a lot. Um, use Angular, it's a cool thing. Thanks. Thank you.